She held back her skirts and turned her feet one way and her head another way, as she looked down at the shiny, pointed boots. Her foot and ankle looked very lovely. She could not believe that they were a part of herself. She told the young salesman that she wanted an excellent and stylish fit. She said she did not mind paying extra, as long as she got what she desired. After buying the new boots, she went to the glove department. It was a long time since Mrs. Summers had been fitted with gloves. When she had bought a pair, they were always bargains, so cheap that it would have been unreasonable to have expected them to be fitted to her hand. Now she rested her arm on the counter where gloves were for sale. A young shop girl drew a soft leather glove over Mrs. Summers' hand. She smoothed it down over the wrist and buttoned it neatly. Both women lost themselves for a second or two as they quietly praised the little gloved hand. <laughs> There were other places where money might be spent. A store down the street sold books and magazines. Mrs. Summers bought two costly magazines that she used to read back when she had been able to enjoy other pleasant things. She lifted her skirts as she crossed the street. Her new stockings and boots and gloves had worked wonders for her appearance. They had given her a feeling of satisfaction, a sense of belonging to the well-dressed crowds. She was very hungry. Another time, she would have ignored the desire for food until reaching her own home, but the force that was guiding her would not permit her to act on such a thought. There was a restaurant at the corner. She had never entered its doors. She had sometimes looked through the windows. She had noted the white tablecloths, shining glasses, and waiters serving wealthy people. When she entered, her appearance created no surprise or concern, as she had half feared it might. She seated herself at a small table. A waiter came at once to take her order. She ordered six oysters, a chop, something sweet, a glass of wine, and a cup of coffee. While waiting to be served, she removed her gloves very slowly and set them beside her. Then she picked up her magazine and looked through it. It was all very agreeable. The tablecloths were even more clean and white than they had seemed through the window, and the crystal drinking glasses shined even more brightly. There were ladies and gentlemen who did not notice her lunching at the small tables like her own. A pleasing piece of music could be heard, and a gentle wind was blowing through the window. She tasted a bite. And she read a word or two, and she slowly drank the wine. She moved her toes around in the silk stockings. The price of it all made no difference. When she was finished, she counted the money out to the waiter and left an extra coin on his tray. He bowed to her as if she were a princess of royal blood. There was still money in her purse, and her next gift to herself presented itself as a theater advertisement. When she entered the theater, the play had already begun. She sat between richly dressed women who were there to spend the day eating sweets and showing off their costly clothing. 
There were many others who were there only to watch the play. It is safe to say there was no one there who had the same respect that Mrs. Summers did for her surroundings. She gathered in everything, stage and players and people, in one wide sensation. She laughed and cried at the play. She even talked a little with the women. One woman wiped her eyes with a small square of lace, and passed Mrs. Summers her box of candy. The play was over. The music stopped. The crowd flowed outside. It was like a dream ended. Mrs. Summers went to wait for the cable car. A man with sharp eyes sat opposite her. It was hard for him to fully understand what he saw in her expression. In truth, he saw nothing, unless he was a magician. Then, he would sense her heartbreaking wish that the cable car would never stop anywhere, but go on and on with her, forever.